Foundation Cornerstone, Chapter 4, Spiritual Battles. Let's talk about the good fight. Every Christian experiences a fight of faith. This fight is a spiritual war that the Christian has already won in Christ. The purpose of this war is to have eternal life in Christ. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Some days the battle is hard to take, and other days the battles are all conquered. The battles fought usually have to do with the things the Christian has been delivered from, temptations over the sins of their past. Let's look in 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strives for masteries, that he's not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The soul of the Christian has been saved from the wrath of God and obtained eternal life when they put on Christ. The devil may no longer reach their soul, but as the liar he is, he will tell the Christian that they have no hope of salvation. But the truth is, he is the one that has no hope. He continually attempts to gain access to the soul through the battles of the mind. The best way to defeat the devil is to maintain a spiritual mind in Christ by walking in subjection to that Spirit of God. Let's look in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verses 12 through 16. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. There are times that the devil will place bad thoughts into the mind of a Christian, and then accuse them for thinking it. Then he would say, If you were a Christian, you wouldn't think things like that. If the devil asks, What kind of Christian are you? Just tell them that you're the kind of Christian that is blood washed and saved. Even Jesus was tempted by the devil. The devil tried to get to his flesh also. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then was Jesus led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was an afterward hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, 
and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The Spirit of God is stronger than any weakness of the flesh. There is always a victory available for the Christian that is determined to stay holy. Let's look in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Let's turn to James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verses 6 through 10. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep, and let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. The victory over these battles comes in the form of escape, instead of trying to conquer it on your own. When a person trusts in God to win a battle, they stop fighting it on their own, and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. He has all the strength and power to defeat the devil every time. This is fighting the good fight of faith.